Matter is the smart home standard that's backed by so many of the smart home companies that you're using in your home today. That standard is just weeks away from a public launch, or at least, with all of the following announcements, I'm pretty sure. Matter's version 1.0 was released on GitHub on September 30th and publicly announced by the CSA on October 4th, with rumors circulating that companies like Apple, Amazon, and Google will begin their public release in early November. The basic settings for Matter have shown up in some Apple developer OS devices and in some US-based Google account settings. The IKEA Dirigera Hub is a Matter controller with ZigBee and Thread, and it's now slated for release in some countries in November. Google, Apple, Amazon, and Samsung have all released developer APIs for working with their systems with Matter, and they're all publicly talking about it. The Yale Assure Lock 2 was announced with a Matter add-on module being released when the standard comes out, and they said this year. Hubitat finally got on the CSA members board, and Eve had a really great demo of Matter at the recent IFA conference in Berlin. And within that demo, Eve accidentally confirmed something really huge for those of you using Samsung SmartThings, which I'm going to tell you about as we continue in Brian's lightning round of Smart Home New. Hello Automators, thanks for tuning in again. I'm Brian from Automate Your Life and this is something that SmartThings users have been waiting for confirmation of. Now at the IFA conference, Eve had a demonstration of control using Matter with Apple, Google, Amazon, and Samsung SmartThings. The thing is, the Matter controllers from Apple, Google, and Amazon were all shown and confirmed to be working through Thread to control the Eve Energy smart plug that then turned on a dumb light bulb. The SmartThings hub wasn't shown, but if you read the reports by people who spoke with the people from Eve, the hub was under the display. It was the AOTech SmartThings hub, and yes, it used thread. So without an official word from Samsung, nor any official timing to give you, I can confirm that SmartThings V3 and AOTech hubs are being tested to work with Thread. And given that demo, I will guarantee you're getting that upgrade to your hub. Speaking of smart things, the dates have moved for the official end of the Groovy platform. So you can see the end dates being given to us by Samsung now, which was already supposed to have been started on September 30th. Now let's talk about Google. By now we will have had a hardware event from Google and I will talk to you about that in a bit. But they have made some pretty significant changes to their lineup of devices in the last few weeks. You can now turn on your Halloween seasonal theme on your Nest doorbells, and no, you don't need a subscription for that. And I would keep checking every month in your doorbell settings because they actually released an Oktoberfest ringtone, there will be a Diwali chime available now actually, and Lunar New Year, as well as Thanksgiving, Christmas, Hanukkah, New Year's, and even Kwanzaa. Traditionally, Google's presence sensing has been done by either the Nest Thermostat, the Nest Protect, and the Nest Secure, as well as nowadays you having your phone location. Uh, that is also part of the presence sensing feature in the Google Home app. However, you can use that presence sensing feature to execute your home and away routines, which is fairly useful for you to keep power costs down in your home when you leave and have things ready for you when you get home. But now you can use your Nest speakers and smart displays to sense whether you are home or not. It's based on touch control and assistant commands. So they won't just be using ambient noise around your home and measuring that, but specific interactions to determine your status. The Nest Hub and Nest Hub Max now have a new way for you to use Google Search, and they have finally given us a proper keyboard. When you swipe up from the bottom, you will find the quick action for search. It's not just a way to bring up the Google Assistant either, but is now a way to bring up Google Search, the web page. Once you tap on the search bar, Google will give you a keyboard 
to tap on. After you've searched and found what you're after, you can return to this same screen by swiping up, or in some cases, you will have a back button on the browser that you're being given. This next one is specific to the Nest Hub Max, at least so far in my home, but I'm always interested to hear if any of you can enable the new quick phrases on any of your other speakers or smart displays. In your Google Assistant settings, head to quick phrases. You will be able to turn on things like setting alarms and setting timers, as well as the weather and basic light control. What this feature does is it allows you to not say the wake words to your Nest Hub Max, which means you can enter the room and say, lights on. Something else you'll notice in the Google Home app today is that some of the controls are changing when you long hold on a device. These aren't real fancy and I don't think they're amazing, but Google has shifted how you will control fans, air purifiers, TVs, and a few other devices in the app. And I do expect those controls to get better. And if you remember a time when If This Then That had all of Google's smart home products on their service, then you also remember when that service lost all of that, and you also remember you felt pretty angry about it. Well, Ift announced a new partnership with Google Nest, and the first device that they were able to bring back to the service is the Nest Thermostat. So there are applets there for you to use if you have the Nest Thermostat and an account at Ift. One of the biggest things for me as a content creator is a stable income. And that's where our channel members really help out. So I wanna recognize all of our members this month and invite you to join them in supporting Automate Your Life if you find this content useful or just good in general. But I end up speaking much more with members one-on-one, -on -one, and that means I get to learn a lot from them. And this month, I got two things from Hugh, who's unfortunately, or hopefully, more appropriately safe as I record this video as Hurricane Ian rolls through Florida. But Hugh has been a tester for an integration for YoLink products and Apple HomeKit. This is a plugin that would work with your existing home bridge. And while not officially supported by YoLink, has been given the thumbs up in a lot of ways by testers like Hugh. It will give you access to a lot of YoLink's products on Apple's home app. And obviously with the long range of LoRa on YoLink products, you're gaining a whole new dimension to your smart home with Apple. The other thing that Hugh does is he builds 3D print templates. And in the past, he showed me a few of those, but this time he has one for an Akara button that you can pick up at a link down below in the description. One of the big gaps that we have as automators is with the devices we purchase and if companies either go to business or they just aren't up to par when it comes to cybersecurity, then we will end up exposed. So the European Union has identified that many connected products have a low level of cybersecurity and don't provide security updates to address issues. They also found that we can't, as consumers, even identify products that might have these issues. To address this, they've created a draft of what is called the Cyber Resilience Act, which will impose requirements and subsequent fines of a significant nature if companies are not doing those two to three things and therefore not protecting us with their products. To me, it would be great to see this kind of legislation go in all over the world. I haven't seen anything quite this detailed or ready to help. Speaking of cybersecurity, it's pretty scary when you think that a company that provides you power can reach into your home and change your thermostat. This is the world many of us are living in and Amazon actually just announced a program with their smart thermostat that would allow them to change the temperature one degree in your home if the power grid in your area wasn't utilizing green energy. There's more details to that program, but many people in Colorado were pretty upset when they realized the results of a plan they had signed up for with Excel Energy. There was an energy emergency, or that's what it was deemed as in Colorado. And as part of a voluntary program that people had signed up for and had some benefits of, 
their thermostats were locked out and they couldn't override the temperature controls being put into them by the energy company. So I hope all of you are hearing that there is a possibility for this to happen and that you should probably read those terms and conditions when you sign up for programs like this. And I want to let you know about something related to security on your Android smartphones and related to the smart products you have. With the release of Android 13, I now personally have experienced three different smart home applications struggling with Bluetooth connectivity. That means if your product uses Bluetooth at all, you could have trouble getting it working or continuing to communicate with the device on a regular basis. Setup can be a real pain right now with Android 13. So watch yourself with that one and maybe have an iPhone or an iPad around. Let's rapid fire some new products that came out in the last month. Twinkly's Squares are a $250 US product, but they look fantastic and I'd love to get my hands on some, but they seem to be out of stock pretty much everywhere. Thankfully, Philips Hue usually has stock of their products and they revealed shorter light strips for monitors, which I think is nice, but expensive. They also had something called the Light Guide series leaked and these look very nice, but also very expensive as per usual with Hue. A cheaper way to go, but still get a Signify product is to buy Wiz. They released a smart Wi-Fi smart bulb with motion sensing capability embedded directly in them. So you're not having to use another hub in order to get motion sensor control on your lights. The new Yale Assure Lock 2 has both a touchscreen version and a keypad version, with both of them having a key-free version and a keypad version. So in case that's not clear, there are four versions in total. Google very quietly launched the new Chromecast with Google HD. The original device was 4K and this one is 1080p. You will lose Dolby Vision format and the sky and sunrise colors, but otherwise, this is the same device just cheaper. Lutron released the Diva Smart Dimmer and Claro Smart Switch that works with Cassetta. I installed the Diva and I have to say it works great within that Cassetta lineup already in my home and you can check that out in our monthly unboxing video. Link is below. Also in that video is the Eufy Cam 3 and the new home base. I am very impressed with that product as well and I did a pretty thorough review of it in that same unboxing video. Shortly after being purchased by Amazon, iRobot released the Combo J7 Plus which is a robot vacuum, but also a mop. Now the difference here is how the mop comes out and doesn't require you to actually change anything out, which I think makes this a much better option than many combo devices out there today. It also literally paves the way for the Amazon tank that I told you about last month. Acara now has a wall mountable version of their air quality sensor. I'm not too sure on a North American release, but this is how Acara goes, releasing in China and then usually coming to North America and Europe. Maybe the best new product though, comes from this guy over on TikTok who created an automatic mailbox that goes back and forth between his home through the use of a push button. This October 11th and 12th, is another Prime Day. Amazon's just decided to do another one, and with all of their releases coming from their hardware event and all of these companies gearing up to release new products, there's gonna be a lot of good deals, and I think this will preempt Black Friday and cause some of those deals to be a bit lesser, or maybe the products just won't be in stock. So I'm looking at the 11th and 12th at a date when I'm probably gonna purchase a lot. And actually, SwitchBot is having a 25% sale on all of their products on both their website and Amazon. It'll run during those two days and the coupon code is down below in the description for you. You guys know I like to tell you about new research being done and oftentimes it seems to be based on batteries or charging smart home products. And a research team in Korea found a way to use infrared lasers to transfer 400 milliwatts of power over 30 meters. They specifically are doing this research in order to charge smart home sensors. The only question I have is will they put it on sharks? so that Dr. Evil can finally have his way. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, I'm uh, showing my age there with that reference, hey? Sadly, every month I have to tell you about a few products that died an ugly death. Why are we still here? Just to suffer. But thankfully this month is a pretty light list. If you have the original Eero router, then it has now received its last update. It still works, but you're on the path to the end six years after that device's initial release. The MyQ Chamberlain Homebridge Hub, which gives you access to HomeKit controls for your garage, is being discontinued. And those will still work, but again, you're on that path to the end. MyQ also just seems to do this with just about every integration they have ever created. So I hope they've got that figured out before they totally ruin their reputation. I'm honestly a little tired of trying to keep track of my queue. And I told you about Smart Dry dying a few months ago, but it is now officially at its end. Let's have a moment of silence. Okay, that's enough. What I didn't talk about in today's video are the new hardware releases from Amazon and what we heard from Google at their respective events. With Amazon, I found some really surprising things at the event and most content you've read or watched about the event won't have covered what I picked up because I had some extra conversations with Amazon before and after. You can find out all about that by watching the video on screen now. And if I've managed to get a video out by now about Google's event, it's up on screen as well too. So pick your poison. Otherwise, thanks for watching today. And of course, don't hate automate.